Hi, I'm Jane Play, I'm creating free video content, teaching people how to trade Betfair absolutely for free. If you're enjoying my videos or you're learning from them, please support me back by hitting the subscribe button and also don't forget to hit the like button on any videos you watch. This will enable me to create more free content for you so you can learn to become a better trader. Best of luck in the markets. So this is the first race of the day, uh, at 10 past one at Sandown. Uh, liquidity was above 300k at the start of the race, which is a good sign um, for the first race. The first race is normally a little bit lower the day before the punters start sort of getting into the market. So that might be a sign of good liquidity today. We'll, we'll have to wait and see. Um, there's lots of fin bits in this market, though, so it's got to be got to be careful. Uh, the, grey, the grey Falcon made a cock up at the start, so it looks like a lot of people are trying to uh, lay that at the moment. It might be a horse to get in front of that caught the first fence. But we'll have a little look, see what we can get. We're now getting into that uh, time to try and get some ticks through. Number five in all. So as they settle down then, and it's still Manucci with his long lead of about eight lengths now, as he goes down towards the final flight over on the far side, Moon over Germany, Tebow, the Grey Falco, show on the road, global agreement wider, under a patient it's ride. Now, is it? And then on the inside, yeah. 1704. And in second place, that was 1704. Some through. of the jumping getting pretty... So not much in the first race, but... Uh... Mind. It goes like that sometimes. Move on. So this is the opening race at Fontwell. Uh, it's a Thursday in uh, mid-February. Uh, the liquidity is lower than the first race at Sandown today. I can see that straight away, but so I'm expecting Sandown to be better liquidity. Um, looks like we've got a short price favourite in this race as well. We have, yeah. Um, so you'd think the liquidity would be even higher. So most of it is uh, on this favourite. So we've got to have to be careful here. There is some money in the market on the second uh, favourite, uh, and that is probably the one that we're going to be looking to trade if we get the opportunity. Um, other than that, we might have to just uh, blank this one. We'll have a look. It's better to blank it um, and not trade than to go in, in a risky situation and just bank always. So let's have a look anyway. Family Legends goes along with the lead. The so this is just too bottled up today. at the moment. There's a nice 400 sitting there. It'd be nice to get in front of it, but there's just too much money on the backside, so that may well just disappear. Yeah, it's getting matched, look. And then our deco to the outside of Lave. The backside is just too strong. As they run to the home straight once more. And on they go towards flight um, number five. There's nothing else, everything else is just big odds. So bonus back to start Murphy. Leads from in second dreaming blue. Chris call over in third. Yeah, you might get a few ticks down it's about three. In a bit, as long as that. Just got to watch that favourite, because if something happens to it, then this price is going to come crashing in and leave us in a pickle. You can see they're one and two at the moment. Content to track through the leader throughout. Chris call a further three lengths down in third place. Don't be fooled just because it's not on favourite that it's going to win. It doesn't mean it will win. It's Barony Legends. It still has the lead. A couple of lengths. To Dreaming Blue in second place. Okay. Chris Call just about in third from Hastrick. Over this next flight right. of hurdles. And then Art Deco and Lave Vitesse. I'm out of here, man. Down the back straight. They're on the way towards what'll be three out. Once and again, right over by that tree line. Barony Legends, the leader still. From Dreaming Blue in second, Chris Call. Right, I'm just taking it out. Still very much a handy third. I'm too nervous about not getting matched, and that was the right thing. The price <laughs> popped in. Sucker. Straight <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> Yeah, not much of an opportunity in that race, unfortunately. <laughs> it looks like the favourite is going to get turned over. Uh, and there you go, it just, it just goes to show <coughs> been turned over by a horse that was, well, originally five Market six. suspended. But uh, that was trading up in the 20s um, just recently, so it just goes to show how quickly things can move in that business end and why you don't want to be involved at the end of the race. It's suicide. Um, <coughs> I'd rather blank the race like that, then put myself in a lot of danger. Okay, so this is the first race of the day at Leicester, uh, 135, two mile, full furlong, novice handicap chase. Um, it's got an odds on favourite in it, and considering that, the odds in the liquidity is pretty poor, because you can see most of the liquidity is on that odds on, I meaning the rest of the race is pretty rubbish. Um, got to be very careful here, uh, as always, when there's an odds on, if something happens to it, uh, got to be careful, lucky he's not front running like in the last race I just looked at. So hopefully the prices will bounce around a little bit. We'll be looking to get in on the second or third favourite at the right times before the business end of the race. Um, assuming there's a safe to do so. Behind the 
Let's have a look. No hubs, no hoops, looking for a I'm constantly watching the price of the odds on as well as watching if I can get a good opportunity in here to go in, but I can't. Also under a penalty, there isn't at the moment. March and Adam Wedge held up out the back as they clear what I can't predict that price is going to bounce out at the moment. Number five. That's the problem. All still standing, just over a circuit to go. And in the lead is out the Glen, just in front from Leskin Fair in second place. Then comes Maritimo and no hubs, no hoops running together. Three lengths back to Radetzky March, who's up on the outside of Fazait as they take a right-handed turn that a little bit, and just start to, get to make their way towards the back straight. Still got 10 left to jump in this happy 18th birthday Georgia novices handicap chase. So out the Glen leading from the second place a successful is trade, nevertheless. Then we have Maritimo so up against the rail of Fazait. Four more plane fences down the back straights and it's out the Glen, Lewis Stone still in front. Leskin Fair in second place with Maritimo saving ground on the inside. No hubs, no hoops. We've on that one's inside is Fazate and out wider. Radetsky March and Adam Wedge. So we're going to get matched. race downhill to the next fence. Come on. And it's out the Glen Anyways. who still holds the advantage. Out wider, Leskin Fair. <coughs> Couple of quid. Over the next. Maritimo on the inside. Out wider, Radetsky so, so the market's turning into a two-horse race. Come on, Adam Wedge. Nice race. And then comes Fazate. All still in touch as they head towards another um, lane fence. However. To climb again. <coughs> Both Although the first two still lead, lost. That one well. <laughs> Redetsky March the coming more towards this near side. No hubs, no hoops in behind. Far side Maritimo and Fazate in behind. Redetsky March travelling strongly is now looming up as they head towards the final four fences. But still leading is out the Glen. No hubs, no hoops is responding for pressure. But travelling well, Radetsky March is moving very stylishly. Leskin Fair in behind. Maritimo trying to get going on the far side. Just missed that by a couple of sticks getting matched there. Ditch where no hubs, no hoops was a little bit untidy. Radetsky March still travelling very powerfully without the Glen galloping on. These two are four lengths clear of Maritimo as they jump two from the finish then. These two are four lengths clear. Just missed a couple. Heading towards the final fence. Just being pushed out to go and quicken up now. Radetsky March out of the go. Glen trying to keep going, trying to keep tabs with Radetsky March. He's travelling all over him though. Heading towards the final fence. It's Radetsky March under Adam Wedge who leads from out the Glen in second place. About a length of between them. Radetsky March jumps it well. And I'm really surprised that price bounced back in down to me. I only did it because it, I missed it by a couple of ticks twice. Um, so there you go. I managed to get 15 ticks on the last one with a small stake. But that's all you need when you're getting that sort of ticks. So that is £6.59. Okay, this is the second race of the day. It's sand down, quarter to two. I was hoping the quality might have picked up a bit, but it doesn't look like it, it has. Um, so we'll just have to be careful. Um, it looks like there's plenty of money waiting around to be matched. Uh, no, not many triple figure numbers though in the market. But we'll have a little look, see if we can get some trades through safely and um, make some dollar. Um, this is a one, so I'm going to have to be in and out quicker. This is more or less two miles. It's uh, one mile seven furlongs and a bit, so it's more or less two miles. So anyway, there's a star and torpedo, and the other two have momentarily been left behind. Come on, get into me. Behind them as they turn down towards the pond fence. <laughs> And the the battle for fourth place, Darabin and Desk Delisle. So they're racing up then towards the last three fences in this Class 3 Ubique handicap chase. Douglas Talking has had things all his own way so far. He's about to be challenged, though, by some kind of star. Jack Quinlan on the outside, Torpillo and Sam Tristan Davis on the inner. The other two having just been a bit outpaced. They're trying to come back. Darabin's under pressure as they took that one. They're coming down to the second last here. And uh, no move from Des Delisle, who's well beaten today. Up they come then towards the second last. Douglas and the rest, come on. In a bit tight. Torpillo. And that would be. Has now got the gap down about so there's a tenner on that one. That's all right. I uh, don't mind that. Markets were bouncing about really good. So um, all over the place. But it looked pretty safe. So that gave me the opportunity to get more ticks. Um, so I was taking 10 ticks at a time. Market four. suspended. <clears throat> Hence why the profit is a lot bigger on this one uh, than the other races. Let's move on. So uh, we've got the uh, two minutes past two at Fontwell Park. It's a two mile free furlong handicap hurdle. Liquidity is poor. Um, I like to see 300k plus and we're below that. Um, I like to see that pre race. It gives you a good indication what you're going to see in play. But there are some big stakes of money um, in play uh, on this race. Let's hope they are sort of uh, more towards the middle of the race when we actually try and get our trades through. Um, well, that's the more likely time we'll get the trades through anyway. So, um, yeah, we'll just follow this with um, caution. Um, obviously, I'd rather not get a trade through and blank um, the trade than 
have a loss. That's what I'm always thinking. You know, I'd rather have a scratch, if you like, or a blank than um, than have too much uh, risk. So hopefully we'll we'll see some safe opportunities. But we'll have a flight number seven, Spike Jones, and then came after the Fox at Cirque du Monde and Cheng Gong and Cronky Knox and only still three lengths cover the whole field. I'm out of here, man. It's over four from the finish. C'est quelqu'un. So the left-hand side on the pictures as we look down the back straight here. From 75. Travel strongly at this stage. Market suspended. C'est quelqu'un the winner beating Pilsen Pen. Clear from Spike Jones back in third after the Fox. There you go, you have a 105 loser. Not quite a photo finish, but it could look like it could have been anyone's in that last little bit. Anyway, let's move on. Not, not a very profitable race for us, but, you know, I'd rather have 70p and play it safe like that, or even nothing, or even a 70p loss than uh, risk getting myself into much danger. So, it's all good. Okay, so I'm looking at Leicester here. Liquidity on this race is very low. It's a two and three quarter mile handicap chase. Um, yeah, less than 200,000. So, we've got to be very careful. Um, obviously, that's mainly pre-race, so we've got to look at what's actually in the market, what's being turned over. Usually, when it's low pre-race, you'll find the amounts of money being bet coming in are low amounts, which means, say, went in there for 20 quid, get four ticks. It might take me three uh, times of hitting that price um, before I actually get fully matched on my exit. Um, and that is the problem. You can see that... There's a few gaps. There, well, this it might be not as bad as what I'm thinking, but this is what you've got to be careful of. Look, zeros, ones, twos, six quid. There's a twenty quid there. Threes, zero, one. They're all small amounts of money. So if it takes you three times to get matched, you could have got hit twice, and then the price could come in on all that time you're waiting, and you end up with a loss. So you've got to be very careful. But let's have a look, see what we can As they head down towards an open ditch, fence number six. Oh, Bought before Lee Town in behind. Fence. Smugglers Blues towards the far side with Captain Tommy. And the bat marker is a Claire Mag as they jump the next plane fence. This price is bouncing around a bit. So we've got a match straight away there. It's okay. It's only for 64 before lunch, days, then but... has the advantage from Young Offender. They've ridden along Red Zor with Smugglers Blues over towards the far side. Captain Tommy, Prairie Town down the near side. And the Claire Mag is out the back as they head to what will be the final fence next time round. All got over safely, still being hard ridden is Red Zor. It's only got a couple behind now as they now head past us with a circuit to go. So bought before lunch leads this now handicap chase. Once again, a tightly grouped field of young offender Smugglers Blues, the Warwick winner last time. Captain Tommy, the ridden along Red Zor. Out wider is Prairie Town, and the Claire Mag is now only four lengths behind them as they take a right-handed turn towards the back straight. Keep changing my mind there. Have, uh, right to do so. Back straight, still ten left to jump. It's bought before lunch, and Richie McLernan that leads by a length bank. and a half to young offender. With Captain Tommy and Smugglers in these Blues situations, next. you're often better to go for more ticks, yeah. but use smaller stakes so your liability is smaller. So if it does go wrong, at least you're not in for too much money. Before lunch is over, all getting over safely. Red saw just about the bat marker continues to be hard ridden, heading towards an open ditch. Typical, that'd have been a time to get matched, and I didn't. Wider. With Smugglers Blues. Young offender out wide as well. Captain Tommy on the inside. Prairie Town. Then comes Eclair Mag, and Red Zor continues to struggle out the back as they race then down towards the next plane fence. So, bought before lunch, and Richard right, McLeod is still out. leading from Prairie Town, looking for a third course success today. Without wider young offender, Smugglers Blues towards the inside of a Claire Mag, and then comes Red Zor, who jumped it in last place, as they have three more down the back straight still to take. Bought before lunch, continuing to run a wide course with young offender, Prairie Town. Captain Tommy on the inside of Smugglers Blues, then comes the Claire Mag. I'm out of here, man. Followed by Red Zor, who's over some five lengths behind them. Making their way towards the next plane. There's a good job to get that close off, leading. as you can see. Young offender in behind. Would have been looking at a bigger loss. It could have been waiting for it to come back. Side, jumped it well. Followed by Smugglers Blues. Then Not saying it won't come back. back the along but Red Zor, still six lengths behind them. One I wouldn't want to be in the situation. To take. Bought before lunch leading from Captain Prairie Town. Far side in between yeah. Prairie Town. Then comes Smugglers Blues as they head towards four out. Bought before lunch still leading. Challenged by Young Offender, a clear man oh towards the near side. Captain Tommy being asked to improve. Smugglers Blues in behind. Cool. Prairie Town looking for gaps. And we're out. I'm not involved. Open ditch, three out. I'm not interested in getting involved in this now, it's, even though it is a long race, so you can go a little bit into the red, but I probably wouldn't go much further than this anyway, but um, look how crazy the markets are, are moving. It's just a gamble, really, unless you can pick one that you think has definitely lost already.
So we've got um, Sandown, 20 past two. Uh, it's a two and a half mile mare's novice hurdle. Liquidity looks a bit better. Um, we're up to 400k. It must have been at least 350. That's pre-race. Um, however, there is um, a short price favourite in it. Uh, it's not odds on. Not quite. It looks like it has, it has been odds on, but it's not odds on at the moment. Or even money, more or less. So that obviously we've got to keep an eye on that one as we do all short runners in the race and see what they're doing because they're going to affect the rest of the prices. Um, and uh, just try and get through safely. There isn't that much money waiting for the liquidity on the other runners, really. I can't see any triple figures there, but there are quite a few, like a couple of 80s together there, for example. So if we can get in front of a lump of money, we'll be okay. There's a bit of cash down there, that, so that could be a good place to go in, for example, just to protect that. Um, I'm going in now because I've got queue position, so if anyone else comes in, there's only 12 quid in front of me, but if that builds up to another 100 or whatever, then that'll be behind me. I can always cancel it off. Inside is almost within half a length of the pace setter. On the inside, Otis Theme, together there with Speech Bubble. Nina the Terrier, and now Swing Complete is the one that seems to be... I'm out of here, man. ...just out pace as they reach the end of the back straight. And they're moving down inside the final half mile of the race. When they turn into the home straight, about three furlongs left to travel with two more flights to take. Come on, match yourself. Well, two of them just being squeezed <laughs> along. The I think I will get matched. Her along at the back there, and the rest. Fleet. And the rest. Harry Cobden's busy Three around. Three times, that's it. I missed the opportunity on that runner, but I didn't want to concentrate on two at the same on time. The near side. Uh, then switch to the inner is Speech Bubble. Gavin Sheehan now just totally missed that. a bit closer. And Nina the Terrier, Tom Bellamy, is inching closer as well. But Love Envoy is finding another gear here as they move down towards the second last. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a shame that that did go negative because if Market it hadn't done, I would, suspended. I would have got matched on that at falls uh, twice rather than just the once for a, a bigger profit. You see, we got four pound thirty-two um, just off that that one trade. So. Um, <clears throat> Difference in price and stakes and the amount of tick value obviously increases the, the value quite dramatically. Um, but yeah, that's just a bit of a shame. But it, you know, it, I think it was the worst thing to do though, because if I had to concentrate on two at once, the worst thing that you can do, and I've had it happen to me before, is that you're laying two runners at the same time and then they both go on and you're screwed because you know you're losing money on both of them. But which one do you cancel off? Do you, do you close them both off? Um, it can be a real tricky situation where it's a no-win situation and manage it. So um, you have to be really careful in those situations. But um, yeah, so I think it was the right, right thing to do to cancel um, that trade-off just so I, I, I didn't have that the chance of that happening. Because that, obviously if the favourite had sort of been pulled up then, I could have been a lot harder. Is that allowed? It just ran, <laughs> it ran through the hole. I'm not supposed to jump them. <laughs> anyway. Okay, so um, Fontwell Park, the 2.37 on a Thursday afternoon, two mile five furlong handicap chase. Now liquidity is really, really poor. So we're going to have to be extremely careful on this one. You can see there's not a lot of money waiting in the markets. This might be one just to blank and ignore. Them noggly, noggly. Um, what I think I'll do is I'll be going for more ticks with smaller stakes if the money doesn't pick up. Um, obviously, with smaller stakes, it's easier, it's quicker to get matched. Um, if it's just twos and nines, fives, whatever floating in the market, the markets are bouncing around quite a lot. But that is because there's low liquidity. But they could bounce quite a lot against you, and that's that's the issue. So um, if we're going to trade anything, it's probably going to be the third runner if it comes in a bit um, with small stakes and a large tick or so. So let's have a look. By Nick Schofield through the opening a half a mile. I don't really want to go much more than a tenner. It's about mountain. 30 quid liability there. Uh, Just over. Here at Fontwell. And looking for back-to-back -back wins at the track. Having won here over course and distance 18 days ago. On that occasion, he was winning his first race. The mistake people make is treating every market the same um, when, when they first start out. And every market is different. Um, you can categorise them. And you should treat them differently. Depending on how they're reacting at the time. What runners are in and so on. The and then you're going to cross over your different categories. So one might have a short price favourite that's, that's front running and a low liquidity, or you could have the same race from um, with high liquidity. So you have to treat them totally differently. Um, and you have to weigh up all the different aspects of the race and then treat it in the right way.
It's away so this has gone right out in price now. So this has turned into a two horse race, and um, this may well just be a blank. And on towards. We'll see. Number seven used to be a water jump here at Fontwell. Obviously, if there's a good opportunity, I'll take it. And that could come shooting in with just a couple hundred quick bets. Popped over in front. So it would take. So golden card. If something dramatic happened, that would move in seconds, a second maybe. Entree there. And Nick Schofield, Invincible Cave, not travelling under Sean Houlihan, ridden going into this latest bend as they work back towards the open ditch now. And it's definitely a case of sitting outside the prize with small stakes. Number eight. And it's Galtee Mountain. A deer! Leads from Golden Cup. When the He's had a good season. price is so in short, you need a bigger stake so to, um, to, so far in the current campaign. to make any money. Tip Top Mountain goes into the ditch. Nearly a share for second place. I think he's just gone into second now. Tip Top Mountain. Entree Dar to the left hand side as we look down the track. An invincible cave. And there you go. There's a prime example of how quickly the market can move. Too close to that fence. Held together Gorn by the ticket match. Remains in third position. Running down right, towards fence it. number 10. At which Galtee Mountain will lead them to it. Again, not a great jump from Golden Card once more. I'd rather hit that one quite Come hard. On. Tip Top Mountain, rail skimming. Uh, it just wasn't worth the stress. Second place. I'm out of here, man. Very early on. It's it's halfway through the race now. One is not going at all well. Is it? Mountain yeah. comes into it and pops over in front. Couple of lengths to the good. Tip Top Mountain now giving chase. On trip oh, to back in third. Still coming, Golden Card. That's the way to do it. Okay, that was two from the end. Gouty Mountain landed running. Couple of lengths in front, but now. So you see, they're one trade. Just see if I can play this off for a few extra pence. Might as well. Um, so, yeah, you can see they're just getting one trade through at the right time. A lot of ticks, small mistake. I only used a, a tenner. Um, so I, I basically, I think, was it 10? No, 15 quid, I think. So I literally got a third back of, mis of me mistake on that. And you see the price just dipped down to me and straight back out. Um, Market we suspended. Or 4.1. I can't remember now exactly what it was. It was around that. So we literally hit the bottom of the market, which is where you want to be. 4.1. So they only traded one tick below us. Um, so 15 quid, there was only 60 quid um, that was matched at the same price as us or one tick below. So that's that's pretty cool. Um, for a fiver, anyway. So we've got a um, two miler, novice chase at Leicester. There's only four runners in the race. The quiddity is pretty poor. It's less than 300k. Um, so we're going to have to be very careful on this one. Um, markets are jumping around quite a bit, so it might be a case of using smaller stakes and going for um, a larger amount of ticks, just so if it does go wrong, you, your liability isn't as, as bad. Um, let's have a little Nelson look. River, again, Fransham's jumping all over the place. Jack Andrews easing that one right off. Fransham's about to be pulled up with four left. So Fransham's jump. pulled up. Causeway on the outside of Nicholson, little between the two. Six lengths back to Nelson River and Harry Bannister in third place. So quite a long run towards the final four fences. Nicholson and Stephanie Causeway, little between them. Nelson River trying I'm to out of here, man. in third place. So Stephanie Causeway in the noseband with Nicholson by the rail. Then in third, still trying to pick up and stay on is Nelson River heading to the final four fences. So Stephanie Causeway has the lead from Nicholson just being nudged along in second. Then in third is Nelson I River we'll get heading here. towards four out. Stephanie Causeway leads by a length. To in second right, we're going to have to close Nelson this off. River's not out of this, trying to pick up in third place. I'm out of here, man. Here's the final open ditch, three out. Stepney Causeway in the lead under Harry Skelton. Again, going out to the left, brushes through the wing. Nelson River continues to run on. Under pressure now, Nicholson as they head down towards the final two fences. Stepney Causeway's got company now. Nelson River's right alongside at two out. Nelson River rather guessed at it. Nicholson's in third, still has a bit of a chance as well, heading towards the final fence. Stepney Causeway under pressure, Nelson River. Just about in front now with Nicholson in third place heading towards the final fence and quite a long run to the Whoa. line. So Nelson River and Stepney Causeway with Nicholson in third place. Here's the final fence. Nelson River is over a length and a half clear from Stepney Wow, what a dodgy market, market that was. Suspended. Nelson River, that was the total outsider. Um, at, that was 10 lengths behind at one point and trading up at 50. So there wasn't much money getting matched, cause, uh, but there was a lot of money um, being matched at 50s at one point there. That, um, oh, it stayed around that 
for us for quite a long time when it was 10 lengths behind just before um, Fransham got pulled up. Um, so that is quite a shock for that to win. Um, yeah, you see I got absolutely smashed. I had to take uh, uh, quite a big loss on that race and then managed to get a trade through with 35 ticks to pull it back um, when I could see Nelson win. Uh, River was, I thought, had won it already. I'm surprised the price popped in a bit past me. I think I got back to about another eight quid. Um, but yeah, I wasn't using too much either because of the amount of ticks. You don't need to use too big a stake on that. So yeah, £2.59. I'm not too bothered about losing £2.59. That's nothing. This is a three-mile race at Sandown. Uh, my hope for high liquidity day hasn't happened. This is still quite poor. It's a long race. It's a three-mile chase um, at five to three um, on a Thursday in mid-February. Um, if there's just four runners in this race, all look like they, well, the outer two probably are more tradable ones for me. The market's are bouncing around like a good and look, so we might be able to get more ticks through. Um, but liquidity is thin, so we might have to use smaller stakes to be on the safe side and keep the, the liability as low as possible. Um, I don't want to get a massive loss of like 60 quid or something today, so I have to try to follow it back, um, which could easily happen uh, on these. So um, it's a case of being very careful, really. So we'll have a little look. Uh, Bannicross, unfortunately, has gone out, and so has the other uh, one. That I was looking at as well. So if this develops into a two horse race, it might be a race for me to just blank and tip back. I could do the rest anyway. But we'll have a little look at how the how, what happens with the odds as the uh, race progresses. Water, Bally crawling Dylan, still out in front as they head to the railways again. And 17, 18, and 19 these are. And there wasn't much to choose between uh, Rolling Dylan there. Major Charlie O'Shea oh. looked across. He can see Captain Will Cowell on Hogan's height, <laughs> making things interesting. Sucker. Drawing alongside, actually. Looks as though this, maybe his saddle might have slipped slightly on the Hogan's height. Come maybe on. it was an optical illusion, but he seems to be travelling all right. He's Go in second around. place. In third, then is Ballycross. And, and Rolling Dylan is going to come home here for Major Charlie O'Shea. So not much on that. Um... Market suspended. Um, so, Funkwell Park, um, nearly quarter past three on a Thursday in mid February. Two mile free fell on Lovers Handicap Chase. Um, we've got uh, a field of quite a few people, runners that we could uh, trade at their prices. Uh, the outside of all of the dogs is a little bit too high for my tastes at the moment, um, but that may well come in. Uh, and for Laggy as well. I'd like to see that come in a little bit. Probably will do at some point further race, unless it has a bad one. Um, liquidity is poor. Um, you can see the markets jumping around like crazy. Um, so it's probably a case of just being really careful, uh, trying to use as the race progresses, maybe trying to get more ticks and for smaller stakes. So if something goes wrong, there's a smaller liability. Um, that obviously depends on how the markets are jumping, but you can see that these these can move like crazy. There's there are some double figures in there, but there's you keep seeing a lot of single figure numbers come up, which are just no good. Even low double figure numbers are no good. Um, that can just be taken in a second. So you've got to be careful. Um, you want to protect uh, the 38 quid that we 28 quid sorry we've made already. Uh, and try and get up a little bit this afternoon, but um, at the same time, we don't want a big loss trying to push it too hard. Let's see what we can do now. We're getting towards the middle of the race. So, there's not a lot of money on the back side at the moment. So, if we do get picked up, hopefully, we'll get matched both sides of the book. If we get picked up now, before that builds up, basically. Call off the dogs to the outside and Falangi between horses. Come on. I'm out of here, man. If that's 16, don't go quick. I'm going to have to Into the get out in front of them. And approaching the downhill fence. It's number 10. Yeah, back up there. Beaufort West and pulled up across the leading pair. <coughs> that's because that bigger money came in and I could see there was hardly any money between those. It wouldn't He's have taken much to go up. So, so pulled up cross might as well take the money if I can get it. Shambard remains... Every chance so not much in that one either. There's quite a few races. Liquidity is too poor. I can't even be bothered to watch the end of the race. I'm assuming Shambhar will win it, but who knows? Um, just not not the opportunities that are safe, unfortunately. Um, it's not much you can do about it. 
apart from taking more risk and taking more risk could lead to losses so there's no point just got to sit and grin and bear it and uh, if it if it becomes a day where I only make market suspended something like that then so be it that's what it'll have to be not enough money to live off <laughs> you know as long as you stay positive uh, most of the time you're going to get some losing days but as long as you stay positive most of the time then you'll get the days where you do make quite a bit of money maybe 150 or something 200 quid which over the week which uh, certainly boosts your your money so so we've got more very low liquidity this is depressing it's not much better than irish racing to be fair um just got to be very careful protect the bank um you know it's two mile four two and a half miles so um Fair bit of time just got to see what money stays in play um there are some larger amounts here when i say larger there's over 100 and sort of a couple of amounts that are just flicking around the 50 marks and a few 40s there so if that sort of stays another 100 there if these sort of figures stay and that it backs off a little bit on the um uh, on the um back side then we might be able to get some through but you see how that's all disappeared already so it's very dangerous to be sure um, and I don't want to have losses today um, oh, this is the last day of trading for me tomorrow is for this week uh, tomorrow it looks like it's going to be cooled off tomorrow anyway because of bad weather but I'm moving house collect my keys tomorrow for the new place so this is the end of the week for me so I'll, I'll be withdrawing tonight and I'll withdraw a decent amount of money uh, especially with all the costs of moving and I probably won't have internet for a week so I don't certainly don't want to have a loss so we'll have a look I've just got to play careful four plane fences so leading it's just is no money look. that's what happens when there's no money it can just from shoot in like that second three lengths back to Renfi in third then Ariane and cut the mustard as they take the next plane fence all over well again okay. still Grand Tor Torino Mark, leading just... right by that far rail is Undela Senier Renfee's in third place with Ariane out slightly wider and then cut the mustard over the next. Again, all jumping well, these mares. It's Gran Torino it's leading out. from Undela Senier in train, climbing uphill towards it. Undela Senier continues in closer proximity in second, saw a stride under Paddy yeah. Brennan. Renfee's oh, got God. company on the outside is Ariane and then cut all the right. mustard, just getting a little bit closer on the rail, just moving into third place under Bryony Frost. So Gran Torino leading, a length clear to Undela Senier. Cut the mustard next, ridden along Ren Fee. Out wider is Ariane with Michal Nolan as that. they start to make their way towards the home straight. Four fences. I'm out of here, man. Arena. In front so it took the five and off, it's the worst thing to do. Second. Cut the mustard into a clear third now. Ridden along Ren Fee. Work to do for Ariane, who's a little bit wider. As they head down towards the final four fences, Gran Torino leading. Unda La Senier maintains. <laughs> that now moving pretty close to Gran Torino. Up on the near side, cut the mustard, trying to close the gap now, three lengths behind. That was four out, Lost. Ariane and Renfee. So I had to take that £5.77 loss there. Um, I've got, it's a shame we didn't get matched the second time uh, on one of these other runners because we were very close to it, making a profit. Um, but you can see that as a prime example of how dangerous these markets are. And that traded all the way into 1.34. There's still quite a bit of distance to go and it looked like it was going to win in the end. Of it. So, um, but at that time, the race, you just don't know. And how long do you hang on for? Um, I think that flashed up to about £15 loss, but I still managed to get it down to 577 without taking too much risk. Uh, and then pull 591 back on the other one. So 25p profit, you might as well call that a scratch trade, really. Let's move on. Wasn't very convincing. So back at Sandown, this is the 3.30 uh, on a Thursday in mid-February. Um, it's a two mile novice hurdle. Liquidity is poor. The best liquidity so far, I think, was in the first race of the day, which made me thought liquidity might be okay today, but it's been absolutely terrible. You can see like, how quickly these markets can move um, because of it. So we've got to be extremely careful, um, try and get in front of some money if we can, and um, just try and play it safe, really. Let's have a little look what we can do. Down towards the back straight. Four flights down the back then. And not much to choose between Monviel and Twilight Glory. A deer! Monviel was much the better jump, though. That Took moved there. Two out of Twilight Glory there. Monviel looking How quickly that professional. moved. And his rival at that particular flight. On towards the next then. 
And again, Monville was good. Twilight Glory, a better jump in second place. There's a prime example. Didn't even see myself get matched. Just ahead there of Operation Manos. Only a neck down on him. And still Braveheart waited with as they take the third flight down the back straight. Monviel's really attacking his flights. I'm afraid Braveheart's jumping leaves a little bit to be desired. That was a mistake from him as they move on towards the fourth flight on the back straight. Number six. I'm out of here, man. Out, of course. In this virgin bet, novice's hurdle. Monviel having to give weight away all round here. Come on. Joined by Twilight Glory on the outside. Learn to lock and the line together there with Operation Manor, who jumped that better. He's warmed up to the task. And again, not such a great leap from Braveheart. Reminder there from Gavin Sheehan. Waiting with still he's learned a lot. And now Operation Manor, Stan Shepard, bringing him wider to get a good look at these last two flights. They've still got quite a run before they get to two out. And Braveheart not out of Straight it. Off. His jumping hasn't been great, but he's still in there pitching behind them in the maroon and yellow colours. So, yeah, 4.30. Uh, most of that was just totally staying right outside the, the prices and taking advantage of those big moves. Uh, the first time I got matched, I got matched both sides of the book and I didn't even really see myself get matched. It just moved. I didn't. Uh, so the market moved in and out so quickly it wasn't even visible. It was mental. So anyway, let's, uh, let's move on. So Leicester, uh, five to four uh, on a crappy Thursday in crappy February. Um, with crappy liquidity into the race and just over 200k match that is absolutely terrible um and it's basically what's going on today um compared to last thursday i think that last thursday i made about 114 quid or something to give you um an idea uh, and it's all down to um liquidity i think last thursday I had a couple of losses as well which were you know sizable i believe about 20 quid and a and a 15 or so today one small loss and uh, still only managed to pull in 34 pounds six pence i've looked at every race of the day so far as well um but a lot of it is just sitting on your hands um you've got to just sit in positions where um if there's a big move in the market you could, might get matched quickly but um the market's just moving around so much um i can tell you reasons why i don't want to try. i don't want to trade this one because the price is getting back then it might come in further i don't want to trade trade this one because the price has gone out quite a bit and the markets are thin if the 800 quid goes you can see there's small amounts of figures that could easily shoot back in if that horse picks up a little bit um and uh price too big there for me at the moment royal acts i'm looking at up there was coming a bit so royal act is now in second there's hardly any money there so if you're going to trade that you're going to have to sit massively outside the price so that's what i'm going to say massively outside the price uh for higher tick higher ticks uh less money so less liability instead of going in for like about 20 i'm only going in for 10 but i'm going to try and go for uh eight ticks instead of normal four uh if we get matched we get matched if we don't we don't Arnie, torrent de Mott comes next out slightly wider as they head towards four from the finish in behind roxy fett and falcon sun heading towards and three there you out go the final man. Three rhythm is going particularly well upsides fulgorix and here we have it, he's made good headway as they jump three out. So you see how many ticks we had to get there just for a small profit. So dangerous. All act under pressure, Falk and Sun and Rock Fett. We have gone clear. Here we have it then, just about in front with Fulgerix who jumped that well. Under pressure now, legendary rhythm. They're clear of Torrent de Mott and Roxy Fett heading towards the final fence. Here we have it on the far side. Fulgerix under pressure. Just trying to close it off as much as legendary possible. Legendary rhythm still there as well. They're clear of Roxy Fett in fourth place heading towards the final fence. Here we have it on the far side. Leads by a couple of lengths at the final fence from Fulgerix. Then legendary rhythm being hard driven. So you go, you see the tactic there it was too, that was a bit dodgy at the end actually. Um, but I was, I was watching the race as well, and I could see there's miles left, look, the price come in again. Um, might even come in again. But um, yeah, so I'm just picking up a whole load of tips. Um, you see how much that bounced around. Market miles. suspended. The, the race left, the, that's a total overreaction, in my opinion. I'm surprised, you know, I shouldn't have got my action. You see that traded all the way down to... Uh, below even money and I didn't really think it deserved it to be honest with you so that's why we did it luckily to get 8.25 that's probably the biggest profit of the day I think um but that was more luck than um skill to pull that off to be honest with you the market moved more than I what it you know I I went for I got more than 10 ticks so god knows what I got yeah, luck always helps um but yeah just keep protecting that bank
and have a look at the last couple of races, but I'm more concerned about hanging on to the small amount of profit I made today rather than making any more money. But obviously I've got to look because all races you trade, the more money you make in the long run. Look at that fence. Right, okay, so we've got more Finn markets. Uh, see how much they're moving around like crazy. At least there's money coming in, though. That's why they're um, bouncing around so much. But it does mean um, that we could get caught out badly. So the idea is smaller stakes, again, and sit outside the price, hope for a spike to pick us up. Uh, with a bigger tick offset, so we still get, you know, a half-decent profit. Um Obviously, going for more ticks means it's harder to get matched both sides of the book um, normally. But when they're jumping around like crazy, not so much, especially if you're sitting way beneath. Um, you just want to see a big bet come in, pick you up, and it bounce straight back out. Sometimes it can come in so quick um, through cross-matching or whatever um, that uh, you don't even see your entry get picked up. But let's have a little look, see what we can do. Being held together in front here for Ben Jones. And he leads Popper Poutine on the left in the red. On the right, then, is Potter's Legend. Watching and that money build up on the back the side. Right I'm not them interested there. just yet, to be Musical fair. Musical slave who shaped really well. An exit the last time out. And again, the leader, Dr. Kanaga. Slow down, down the at that fence. So, they're moving up towards the, the next. And then they'll be jumping the open ditch. Got the double fence in front of us. It's a bit money out. He's just Dr. Kanaga with his ears pricked. Nice, neat, straight jump by him that time. Popper Poutine. I'll go around. Right the way down Musical there. Musical slave. Tom O'Brien himself looking for a double. And Jack Quinlan... On Potter's Legend. Just that's so up ticks. towards the open. That's just a waiting here. game. And that looked We're easy. going to cancel that off. All four of them. So they're coming up the hill for the we'll first time. Get spike. Class three virgin bet. You see, there's not chase. a lot of money there, so just Dr. take some Kanaga place. Come under quid bet. Push, push. By just over a lane. cross matching on a big Popper bet on the paper, even. He was only beating the short head at Wincanton last time out. He's just ahead of by half a length or so to Musical Slay, the top weight. And on the outside. Looking up Potter's Legend. That's too big a cross meeting consider at the moment. So they're reaching the top of the hill now, and they've had to turn right-handed and move down towards fence number 12, almost completion of their first circuit here. The frequency the is that race of the slot afternoon. is free. And uh, heading down towards the next end. Dr. Kananga, still from Papa Poutine and Musical Slave, Potter's legend. All travelling nicely within themselves. Let's see how they jump this, this fence. And the answer is nicely. On they go, they have to turn right-handed uh, to the back straight for the final time. A mile and a quarter left in this race. Dr. Kananga. Moves down towards the 13th fence, and his lead is about uh, two lengths now. Popper Poutine. Musical Slave in the air again. A slight error there by Potter's Legend. Just a slightly slower jump. Probably anyone again. A bit now as they move on towards the next. And a mistake there by Popper Poutine. And uh, second place. Cancelling that off. There there's too much money slave. coming in. Here's the open ditch now. And the three leaders jumped it well. And Potter's Legend has just found himself caught a bit flat-footed now as they enter the back straight. He's, he's down by about six or seven lengths all of a sudden. As Dr. Kananga keeps up this relentless gallop. On towards the water jump. Okay, but one Poutine, there. a musical slave. Uh, trying to keep tabs on him. At the moment, they are doing so. <laughs> behind still is Potter's Legend. The gap is closing slightly. Here's the railway fences again. Dr. Kananga, Popper Poutine, musical slave. And then Potter's Legend. Here's fence number 18, the middle one of the railways. And the leaders jumped it well. And watching there, the 12-year-old Potter's Legend jumping uh, six <laughs> behind them. They're already on to the next. And Dr. Kananga's jockey, Ben Jones, was just having a look to see what the opposition was doing. He must be quite pleased with the way things are looking. He's going really well in front. These by two and a half. Popper Poutine and Musical Slave behind him. And a gap then of about to 12 lengths back to Potter's Legend. So three more fences left to go. And the two horses in behind Dr. Kananga are now being pushed along. Popper Poutine is trying to respond for Sam. And then behind then is got Tom O'Brien on working on Musical uh, Slave. So I only one trade through that, but I think that was wise, to be honest with you. I could have got something on uh, Popper Poutine uh, a little bit towards the end if I'd gone, moved up to fours. Um, but by the time I sort of thought about it, I kind of missed the opportunity. It was too late to do it, so uh, never mind. But um, yeah, I'd rather have 178. It's a small profit, I know. Market suspended. At least it's not a loss in these dodgy markets. So we've got here uh, a three mile two furlong handicap chase, quite a long race at Fromwell Park. Um, it's a two horse race pretty much um, in the eyes of the market. Um, might try and trade one of these other ones if they come in a bit. Um, liquidity is very uh, thin, so I expect this market to be jumping around loads. Um, so if you look at this run here, for example, like fours, one, twos, you know, there's not a lot of money sitting waiting at other prices. So if this money disappears, that could shoot through if no extra money has been put into the market. We've got to be careful of that because if we was to lay it, say, around uh, Oakley, Oakley. freeze and that, some of that money got taken out and it shoots through, we could be in a big deficit. 
I've worked hard to earn this 44 quid today and I don't want to lose it. Um, it's taken a lot out of the amount of races that I've traded. So, um, you know, I could be thinking, oh, let's try and hit that £50 mark. We've got this race and one more afterwards. But I can assure you, if you try to go for round numbers, targets like that will make you trade incorrectly and you'll end up doing something stupid and um, having a loss what, for the sake of a couple of pounds just because it's a round number. I did it once over 40 pence, to give you an idea, to try and make 100 quid when I'd made 99 pounds and 62p or something and ended up blowing entering a, a market I shouldn't have even traded and ended up blowing about 70 quid, uh, absolutely going what, over 40p. So don't ever worry about, don't ever look at round numbers and that, that's, uh, that's a real sort of head game, that's why they price things up with 99p at the end and stuff, you know, because a head game makes you think it's less uh, than what it actually is. So yeah, bear that in mind um, if you get to points like that. So I'm just going to try and protect the bank. If I see a safe opportunity to get some money through, I will. Um, and if I don't, then we'll just sit back. But we'll have money outside the prices on some of these outsiders, I think. And let's see if we can get picked up on a, on a spike not too late on. Eight months. Can't be open ditch now for the first of three occasions. That's number five this time. Oh, and nearly unseated there. Midnight's lost Lock and Williams somehow stayed in the saddle. There's a chunk of money there. Lost the nine. He's got it back before but if that goes, seconds. then you can see that price is probably going to come in a lot more. From Lock and Williams, Midnight Moss. There you go. Smashing in, isn't it? But remains in it at last of the five. It's thinning up on the... They make the way towards fence number seven. Backside. Bears him at him. It is tempting with that other bit of money there. No dramas at that fence. You're right, Harry. Lands in second. Also looking for his third win over fences today. Now I've seen it push out a bit. I'm Blanc, who won on this just pop in there for four ticks. Last season, over a shorter distance. Jack Tudor on board. That's nice. Yeah, a bit of money's come behind me on the same silks. spot. Um Profet to the inside. In fact, now going between horses at Um Profet under Ned Fox. There you go. That worked out nice. No danger there. It's all 143. Last year he came down in this contest. Just got to look for little opportunities like that, or go for the big. Um, the, the higher amount of ticks on the big moves. You're right, Harry. As the leader goes a little further clear on the downhill run towards. At the moment, I'm waiting for prices to thin out. If that makes sense. About four on one side of the book. To Um Profet, and you're right, Harry. And Chaco and Blanc wider on the track. And midnight. The lights going at four three. The back of the blundered through that one. I think. Midnight Moss in the final placing. Now going through the middle of the track, having taken. So there's not that much money in front of me. There's a little bit behind me, so. We're bent around the moment. It's quite likely we could get picked up and match by side of the book. But if I see that starting to come in a lot, either quickly or with bigger stakes, and we need to close off. Looks like the other two outsiders have gone right out in price at the moment, so this is the only thing I can concentrate on. The other two are too low for me. I'm not interested at this stage. Continues in the lead. Also took a pretty heavy tumble last time at Plumpton. That was the so opening just fence. a waiting game. No problem so far over the first ten fences. Here at okay, the out of it, but that could still jump still fly in quite easily. So from your quite right, happy Harry, to leave it there. Out there for Kevin Brogan, the grade between them. Um, Profet, and Not doing too big a stake, so my liability there is only about thirty five quid or something, is it? Jack Tudor. I'm out of here, man. So, so. Williams. No problems with that preceding fence this time around. And deal with that. Made a small mistake there. So we see that market Fiddle bouncing Fiddle. now. That's yeah, where you want to get matched by side of the book when it's doing that quickly. So on they go towards the Part matched. Which will be the last in another circuit's time. And bear to matter. Over in front and safely. Come on, interest there. <laughs> so we got through another bit again. Um, Profet. We check on Blanc to his outer. And it is Don't just loss. literally He's rinse and repeat at the moment. He was last seen winning at Doncaster all but two years ago, 720 days back. Watching the race timer to see where we are in the race as well. There's quite a long way to go. I'm out of here, man. This is the three mile two fold on race, so it's quite a long way. Three and a quarter miles. He leads by best part of three lengths again. So there must be about a mile left to go at least. Harry in second. Check on Blanc racing around the outside of him. I'm just going to lower that tick. Midnight Moss, just a small stumble around that bend. I might lay it more. Up the down Come on. Fence now. I did that just to get in front of that other that money so I get matched quicker. In case the market was starting to come in. 
Been shaken along there. Midnight the Moss is fence. So Bea de Matan in third, then Check on Blanc. They're racing down towards the final fence, and it's Um Prophet. And now would be a stupid time. Why? Right right because if, um over that last okay. if the Four horse in front was the fall, then um, the price is going to come shooting in, and it's going to be at 101, and you're going to lose your whole liability. So don't think. Uh, just because you know, just because it's in front. Market suspended. Or just because it's behind with not far to go, um, you're going to get away with it. You're risking a lot for um, for no return. Really, it's very dangerous thing to do. There's a horse the other day. It's on Racing TV channel. They've got a video on there of a horse that clearly won the race, and it just got distracted by um, someone in the um, um, in in with the spectators. I think it might have been the. Uh, tr one of the trainers or something like that saw them and then literally ran towards them um, so literally ran sideways and nearly ran into the crowd uh, letting the horse that was sort of 10 12 lengths behind it just come up and catch it and beat it so you never know what can happen at the end of the race you've got to be careful um, and if you just um, make sure you're out before the end basically anyway let's move on one more race left um, I'll trade it if okay so sun down uh, six doggly, doggly. Say I did say on the previous uh, uh, race that this was going to be the last one, but there was actually one more after this that I'll look at as well. I didn't realise. So uh, looking at this, again, liquidity is poor. So same tactics, stay outside the price or get in front of a large amount of money. Um, don't want to blow uh, the £47 that I've made today um, because obviously I'm not going to make it back. Um, I'm quite disappointed with that amount of money. The markets i mean you might think well that's pretty good because you almost doubled the bank but the, the fact of the matter is i haven't i've only had one small loss today so with one just one small loss i would expect to pick up a lot more with all the markets that i've traded my average is about six pounds something i can't remember now 650 or something like that average per market is what i average so you consider how many markets i've traded today i can't remember i don't know what it is but it's 12 probably about 17, then you can see that is quite a small amount of money. I'm probably averaging about £3 a market if I'm lucky. So um, anyway, enough about averages. They, they change uh, throughout the year, obviously. Um, those those figures are adjusted or uh, with uh, the bigger profits I might make in the summer. So can't always think like that, but um, I would have still expected to make a bit more if I'd known I've made a one small loss at the start of the day and the rest have all been in profit, but there you go, all scratched. Anyway, so we're just going to protect that because I know how easy it is to just blow the look now and um, just look at the market at the moment and it's pretty buttoned up. So we'll have a little look and uh, just see if we can pull some ticks off in that stage, but I'm going to be more reluctant to get trades through. Wicked so West is the one the that's price. made up the eye-catching ground on the outside. It moves into... A share of second Watching place the race now, timer. on between horses, Grange Clare Glory, and on the inside is Central Jacko in the blue sleeves, getting a little bit closer. Contemplate My Faith is battling on, and then a gap of seven or eight back to Colonial Empire. So, coming inside the final half mile of this Class 4 contest, and Letty Lutz is still the leader. <laughs> she comes Sucker. down the side of the course with Wicked West breathing Come down on the neck. In the hands of Sam Twiston Davis, Grange Clare Glory's oh, made up the ground over the last two or three furlongs. In the hands of Tom Scudamore and is laying down a bit of a challenge as well. And then comes Essential Jacko, moves up in a share of fourth with Amanon. Contemplate my faith. And then weakening Come right now, it now is Colonial Empire is tailed off. Letty Lutz is continuing to stick at it here and comes down towards the second last with... And Wicked that would do, West mate. ...now passed by Grange... That would do. Um, a little bit into the red there, uh, as you can see. Red frame, but not quite up to finish. I could go in there and try and pick up some ticks, like low on four, if it bounces back in on a horse. I know that has pretty much lost the race. You can't see that coming back in uh, like that. But I'm not going to bother. <laughs> um, so yeah, quite happy with the fiver. I have actually done the hundred pound mark with a race to go. Uh, so that's fifty pound profit. Right, fifty pound profit. I'll be looking at the, the last race, but again, I'm going to be in no rush to get into it. Happy with what I've made um, for the quality market of the suspended and the quality that's been on today. So, yeah. so last race of the day, uh, five to five at Fontwell Park. Oh, there is an evening 
meeting later at uh, Chelmsford City, but I won't be trading that, I don't think. Might have a little look at it, but as I was saying, this is the last race of the day. Um, it's a national hunt, flat race. Um, liquidity is low, to be expected, with today's liquidity and also the top. Doggly, doggly. In the last. So, um, same tactics, protect the bank. Um, I may not even put a trade through. We'll have a look. I'm more concerned about keeping my money than making money at the moment. So, because, you know, I've, I've really worked hard to get that uh, £52.44 profit today. Um, and <clears throat> on any other day with high liquidity, that would have been a lot higher, um, you know, a lot higher money with the same results, if that makes sense. But we'll have a little look. Be careful. Uh, stay right outside the prices. Make sure we're not in at the finish. And, um, you know, if we do put a trade through and it goes sour, then we'll just take it off, even if it means losing below that £100. So let's have a look. Eight days ago, finishing fourth. Last May here at Fontwell. Paige Fuller on board chasing a double this afternoon. Brett Windsor has been runner up in his so, two bumpers so far. It's currently if you look at this, you can see all the gaps in the market. There's just not a lot of money and coming through. The biggest, biggest amount of money there's 79 quid. The there's a few that must be around about in the 40s, 50s, but most of the bets is either no bets the or they're very low. That one, uh, very low or no bets. One last bit of 85, and then not a lot else. So, <clears throat> problem with this, you, if you watch the numbers that you can see, nothing being traded. Two, one, three, zero. One, four, one, seven, five. All small amounts of money. Sevens. So it can take ages to get matched. So, of deception, pink and black star so, there for salmon race. Not a great race to trade. It's turned, the market's turned it into a two horse race and a few outsiders. A length away so, to the moment, I'm not, I'm not, even got, not even got my hands on the keyboard or the mouse. I'm just watching spectator sport at the moment. I'm just waiting to see if there is an opportunity. I better get a few ticks through. Just over a lap left to go. I'm a favourite, possibly. People like back in a favourite, that's the problem. So the price could come in very quick, even though there's more money there. A length away to Howling Mad Murdoch against the running run in third. Red, white, and blue. Howling Mad Murdoch. And Yves the length back to Red Windsor. So I'm just going to go right outside the price. Field. So See if we get a spike come down. Head. I've got my finger over the X button. The Ready to cancel of off. <clears throat> also it's I'm out of here, man. If the price goes through me. Right on the bend. French bumper has unseated Josh. I'm going to take that down to 4.0 because I have got much money in front of me, and there's 71 just down there. Seeing Josh Moore up on, on his feet in a moment or two, he's just hidden behind the big screen here. Gosh, it's just my pulling out, though, isn't it? So the remaining runners head down the back straight. Another runner as well. French bumper is running back the opposite way at the moment. Hopefully, he'll stay out of harm's way. I can't throw that off, so don't forget about it. I'm out of here, man. On the top turn currently. Meantime, back with the leaders, it's quite a bit of money on the Murdoch and Duke of Deception, the leading two. Lay side on this, so we might better get a few ticks off. Then Vive Dishani and Red We're going to want 10 ticks if we are going to win. Slacker. They begin to race the way back towards the top of the home straight, then howling at Mad Murdoch. <laughs> only by a neck to Duke of So I blanked that race. Um, there wasn't any opportunities, there was no money swapping over. It would have been crazy to really go in. I did put uh, market cover. suspended. A couple of potential trades in, but cancelled them off, and that's that. And that's the wise thing to do. Learning when to sit on your hands in these poor races and not do anything is the best way to protect your bank sometimes. Um, so bear that in mind. If we have a look at the results for today, pull it up. So we're not waiting for a. I will just reset that so we get the last race in that I traded. So, I'll just get rid of the race time. I'm done with that for now. Minimise that. So, yeah, if we look at the markets for today, you can see it's pretty poor. £52.44. Um, yeah, a good result of the bank, but it's over 17 markets. And if you look at this, I've had to, the last one I didn't even get a trade through. And um, if you look, I've done one, two, three, four, five. Is it five markets? Five markets where it's um, I've just literally scratched. 
no, sorry, six markets, one, two, three, four, five, six, six markets were scratched. Just one very small loss. So out of the rest of the markets, um, what that leave? That will leave 10 markets. We've averaged it five pound, tw um, five, five pound 24 a race, uh, just over. So that's not too bad, five pound a race, but you've got to consider I have, there were another, in reality, there were 17 when you look at it like that. It's not much more than three pound a race, but even at three pound a race, you can see it still adds up to fifty quid, which you know it's all right in it. So yeah, if you're wondering how to deal with these weak markets, that's the way to do it. Stay right outside the prices, um, be very cautious, protect your bank, and um, and if you are going in and it's weaker, make sure you're staying right outside the prices. Wait for a spike. Use lower stakes and go for higher ticks if they're really bouncing loads. Um, so got less liability i hope that helps um, if you're enjoying the videos please hit like please subscribe hit the bell if you want notifications when i post new videos and uh, i'll try and give as many tips to help uh, up and coming traders as possible best of luck in the markets for now bye bye